Prime Minister Justin Trudeau is speaking to reporters as the APEC Leaders Summit wraps up in San Francisco. Let's listen in live. Trade share for diversification of Asian economies and building stronger critical mineral supply chains, for example, that are directly competing with areas in which China has dominance. And the other thing that we're going to do is continue to challenge China on areas we fundamentally disagree around democracy, around human rights, around respect for the rule of law. It is a complex relationship with China, but Canada will continue to both stay strong, anchored in our values, and look for opportunities to contribute to economic growth and opportunities for Canadians. Um, over the last couple of days, we saw President Xi and President Biden take that relationship in a different direction, in a warming direction. I wonder what you make of that, and then two, when and how might we expect the Canada-China relationship to take that same turn? I think all of us uh, here at, uh, at this conference uh, saw the positive meeting between President Xi and President Biden uh, as a good sign. Uh, we need to make sure that we are engaging constructively uh, across all partners. One of the things about APEC is it is an extraordinarily diverse a uh, group of countries that share a common ocean. Uh, and uh, because of that, having these frank and direct conversations about how and where we can work together is really important. And Canada uh, will continue uh, to engage at various levels with China as we uh, try to move forward in a more positive direction, but stay very strongly anchored in our principles and values. Next question. Good morning, Prime Minister Ashley Burke, CBC News. Besides saying hello to President Xi, why didn't you have a formal meeting or a conversation on the sidelines with him? And did you make any effort to do so? Uh, actually, uh, in addition to saying uh, hello to President Xi, I talked about how we need to keep our uh, officials and teams working together to try and create constructive dialogue around issues that matter to uh, us individually, but also matter to the world. Um, this is uh, part of the ongoing engagement that Canada needs to have around the world, including with uh, countries we disagree with. But you said to President Xi, I did say hello, but I also said that it would be important for our people and our diplomats to continue to be engaged in issues between our two countries, but also issues that are important for the rest of the world. Here at APEC, it is extremely relevant that we have so many diverse and different countries and that we continue to engage constructively as much as possible among the countries. Now for you back home to have a formal meeting with President Xi at the summit in light of uh, the public inquiry into allegations of Chinese election meddling. Uh, we have always been very, very clear um, going back years now with our concerns around foreign interference and uh, we're going to continue to do everything necessary to keep Canadians safe. Uh, that's something that people expect, both of our diaspora communities, but also of our democracy. Uh, at the same time, we have to look for constructive ways to engage in the global economy, and China remains an important player. Next question. Steve Chase, Globe and Mail. Would you describe Xi Jinping as a dictator? <laughs> look, China's a one-party state. I don't think anyone would call it a democracy. La Chine est un, un pays à, à, à un seul parti. Il n'y a pas personne China is a one party state. I don't think anyone would call it a democracy. In 2013, you described uh, China as a basic dictatorship. Mr. Xi was already in charge. Mr. Biden, uh, the President of the United States, which is our security guarantor, also called him a dictator. Why won't you call him that? Uh, listen. Uh, we can get into uh, all sorts of different uh, uh, definitions. The fact is, He's not running a democracy. It's an authoritarian state. Oui, bonjour, Monsieur Trudeau, Laurence Martin de Radio Canada. C'est toujours Question? pas clair pour moi. Pourquoi est-ce que vous avez It's pas de clear. rencontre bilatérale avec Why la Chine? Why did you not have a bilateral meeting with China? Because you didn't have time, didn't want to, or it wasn't a priority. I had a good exchange with President Xi. But the important thing is to take an approach through our ministers, our different diplomats.
recommencer à avoir uh, des engagements constructifs. So that we can start again to have constructive relations. Uh, I think people understand how we've had significant differences with et, et, uh, our relationship in, with China in the last un, few un years. Graduel, but the process is a gradual uh, process uh, and re-engagement that is continuing that I hope will lead to a potential meeting, uh, but we're not at that point yet. Question? Were you worried about creating a tense moment like at the G20? No, I was not afraid of that. I think that we're seeking constructive engagement where we continue to put the emphasis on our values and principles. But we will continue to work collaboratively. There are so many significant challenges in the world that we will have to try and work together, even with people that we disagree with. With China, there are issues that we can work together on. For example, COP15 in Montreal, where we were able to work with China. We put in place a very significant framework for biodiversity for decades to come. Laura Dillon Kane, Bloomberg News. We've heard this week that it's not too detrimental to Canada to not be at the table with Indo Pacific Economic Framework members because we already have the CPTPP and we have economic relationships with those countries. But yesterday, President Biden announced a critical minerals deal that would strengthen supply chains in those regions uh, and increase competition. It also includes an investment accelerator. So how harmful is it to Canada to not be at that table, and why aren't we there yet? First of all, we have uh, critical minerals engagements and arrangements with the United States uh, that is strengthening and, and uh, uh, seeing a lot of very, very real investments and, and supports in Canada. So yes, we have a, a very strong critical mineral strategy, including work we're doing with Australia and Indonesia, and that's going to continue. It's good that the United States is engaging. I think, I think we need to remember that President Trump pulled the U.S out of the, uh, the uh, Trans-Pacific Partnership. He lost the potential trade deals that Canada stayed in. We have free trade deals with a significant number of Asian economies. So I understand and totally agree with President Biden that with Congress blocking his ability to pursue formal free trade deals, he should be trying to engage, and that's what he's doing with IPEF. And we're, of course, supportive, and we're, we'd happy, be happy to be at the table. But the work we get to do by being part of CPTPP on real full trade deals is of tremendous benefit to Canada and will continue to be. In French, the reality is that President Trump made the choice to withdraw the United States from the free trade agreement with the Pacific economies. Canada stayed in it. So we have free trade agreements with a large number of extremely large economies in the region. So I do absolutely understand why President Biden wanted to engage in a productive discussion with them, despite the fact that the Republican Congress will not let him sign free trade agreements. So yes, we would like to take part, but we have a free trade agreement with the United States, and we have free trade agreements with the region, and those are much more productive than that framework that is being created by President Biden. China's heavy investment in, Mexican, in Mexico for the auto industry, uh, given our efforts to create a North American electric vehicle supply chain that is less reliant on China. Um, you met with the Mexican president this week. He met with Xi Jinping, and they announced you know, more collaboration in that area. Was that a concern that you raised with the Mexican president during your bilateral? I think one of the things we want to see is a strong and growing Mexican economy. And of course, uh, within the framework of our North American free trade deal, within uh, the work that we're doing to create a tremendously competitive auto sector with... Uh, All right, you've been listening to the Prime Minister North speak America, to the press uh, as the APEC Leaders Summit wraps up in San Francisco. All right, we are going to take you back to San Francisco, where the Prime Minister is speaking to reporters after the APEC Summit wrapped up. Let's listen in. There's nobody who is rationally wishing ill on one of their neighbors, regardless of what their religion is or their story is or their background is. And yet we find ourselves in a moment where the intensity 
of the emotions, of the fear, of the grief that people are going through is having Canadians forget a little bit about who we are. And my job as Canadian Prime Minister is to help bring Canadians back together, to understand that if Canadians can't figure out how to get along and remember to be compassionate and empathetic towards each other, then where in the world is a solution for the conflict and the tensions in the Middle East going to come? We have an important role to play, and we need all Canadians to step up to meet that role. Très, très Est-ce que vous avez eu peur avec Vancouver? Pas, pas une de, de, Were you afraid about Vancouver? It's not a question of how I feel, it's about how Canadians feel. We're seeing too much tension, too much violence, and too many attacks against the Muslim community and the Jewish community. Canadians should not be afraid of their neighbors. That goes contrary to who we are as Canadians. My job as Prime Minister is to do everything I can to bring people together in Canada so that we remember who we are and so that we can contribute to a more stable and peaceful world. Thank you for taking that question. Um, the second question. Given that the fall economic statement comes out next week and the fact that we see signs of a stalling economy as well as many people are still struggling financially, can your government exercise fiscal restraint at such a time? What are those challenges? Well, first of all, we are a government that has always exercised fiscal restraint. We have the lowest deficit in the G7. We have the best debt-to-GDP ratio in the G7, the lowest debt as a proportion of the size of our economy. We're one of the three largest economies in the world that is rated by the independent rating agencies as a AAA top-tier uh, economy with a responsible fiscal track. And one of the ways we have done that is by not doing what conservative politicians would want and cutting programs and services to Canadians, but by delivering supports for Canadians in the right ways. $10 a day childcare right across the country is social policy that supports families, that puts thousands of dollars back in their pockets and savings, but also is an economic policy that grows the opportunities and the workforce. There's no reason for conservative politicians to be against that, and yet they are. Dental care for low-income Canadians. This is an economic policy in addition to a social policy. And again, conservative politicians voted against that. We continue to deliver investments in Canadians while remaining responsible fiscally and have all the way through. And that's more of what I'm exciting to sh excited to share next week with the Fall Economic Update, a demonstration that we know how to continue to be fiscally responsible while we make the investments that are going to grow the economy and support Canadians. Next question. Hi, Prime Minister. James McCartan, Canadian Press. Um, shifting to Israel Hamas. You, uh, in your conversation with, uh, with Benny Gantz, the readout from your office said that you strongly emphasize the importance of taking all possible measures to protect civilians and to minimize casualties. Did you, in fact, use the expression maximum restraint that you used earlier in the week with the Prime Minister? I'm consistent in all my conversations. Uh, Canada uh, is extremely concerned uh, about uh, the number of civilian casualties in Gaza, uh, both because the loss of life is heartbreaking to see, but also because the pathway towards a secure viable, independent Jewish state alongside a secure, viable, independent Palestinian state is getting more difficult with all the hardship that Palestinians are going through. So yes, even as we absolutely must see releasing of hostages and a, and a condemnation and justice for the Hamas terrorists, we need to also be moving towards uh, peace and stability in the region, and that means protecting civilian life. It means getting necessary aid and medication and water into Gaza 
the concerns that the UN is highlighting about the humanitarian catastrophe that is going to strike millions of people uh, in the coming days and weeks, that's already affecting so many, is of deep concern to us. And that's certainly what I expressed to, uh, to Benny Gantz and uh, continue to express in all my conversations. I noticed, though, you're not using the expression maximum restraint. Oh, sorry, Why maximum not? restraint. Okay, fair <laughs> enough. That's, thank you very much. That's all I needed. Janice McGregor, CBC News. I'll pick up where my colleague left off. Um, speaking of uh, the word maximum restraint, you were rebuked by Prime Minister Netanyahu uh, for saying that. Uh, he believes Israel is doing everything to keep <laughs> civilians out of harm's way. Do you accept that Israel is really doing that? I think, uh, obviously, there are a lot of um, there are a lot of things that are uh, extremely worrisome that Canadians and people around the world are watching and not entirely understanding. Uh, my conversations with uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu, uh, with Benny Gantz, with uh, others, uh, is about ensuring that, yes, everything is being done to protect civilian lives, because not only is the loss of women and children now heartbreaking, it is also impeding the ability of Israel to be able to see uh, a long-term uh, stable solution uh, to get to a two-state solution. Now, I've had long disagreements with Prime Minister Netanyahu uh, on the necessity for a two-state solution, on our condemnation of settlements. That's well-established Canadian policy that goes back years, even as we continue uh, to stand in support of the people of Israel. But supporting the people of Israel means making sure that there is a future in which there is a strong, viable, safe Jewish state of Israel alongside a strong, viable state in Palestine or of Palestinians. And that will be Canada's continued focus, and we will continue to do everything we can um, to ensure that there are um, as few civilian casualties as possible. And to follow up to something you said, another, said to another of my colleagues here, um, so you did exchange more than just hellos with President Xi. You told us what you said to him. What did he say back to you? He acknowledged what I said. So you're not making news on this front, on this trip. Your intention is, your strategy is to, to not make news on that front right now. <laughs> This trip is about engaging constructively with partners across the Indo-Pacific for the benefit of Canadians. Uh, if you don't think that doing good work with people across the Indo-Pacific is, uh, is news, well, that's, that's a reflection the media has to take. Um, there is good work being done here, and I think that's important news for Canadians. Thank you. This is what concludes today's press conference. Merci beaucoup, tout le monde. All right, All right, that is the latest from Justin, Justin Trudeau, Trudeau as he spoke to reporters at the, the APEC Leaders Summit so wraps out. in San Francisco. Uh, no real interaction between the Prime Minister and China's President Xi Jinping. I just reported hello, but the Prime Minister clarifying today this amid lingering tensions, of course. Um, the Prime Minister says the two did talk about the need to constructive dialogue. He also, to have constructive dialogue, he also talked about the Israel Hamas war, and we'll have more on his comments on that throughout the afternoon.